So, you think you know how to use ChatGPT? The truth is, most people don't. Now, let's find out where you really stand. And in this episode, I will break down the five mistakes that consistently sabotage your ChatGPT results. Welcome to Applied Stuff! My name is Lilia, and this is the place where ideas meet practical application. My goal is simple, to help you think deeper and act smarter. So, let's not waste our time anymore and jump straight into the episode. I often hear people complain that ChatGPT sounds too complimentary when they need a strong judgment, or too robotic when they need empathy. This mismatch between what you want from ChatGPT versus what you are actually getting from it doesn't come just from the prompt. Instead, it comes from the first mistake, which is your personalization settings in ChatGPT contradict the prompt you are using. Let me explain. Think about it. If your default ChatGPT mode is set to friendly, But in your prompt you ask for a board-level strategic analysis, what you're doing is that you're basically driving with one foot on the gas and one on the brake. When you mix an empathetic chat GPT optimization with structure and raw data, the results, as you might guess, will inevitably come out strange, forced, or simply off. Does this sound familiar? If so, let's fix that now. To do so, just open chat GPT. Once open, tap on your initials in the bottom left corner. A menu will appear, and once there, hit the personalization button, and it will redirect you to the personalization settings where you can adjust the ChatGPT tone and behavior to fit your needs. Also, you can add your custom instructions, preferences, even a nickname. The main takeaway here is simple. Always, always match your ChatGPT personalization settings to your prompt goal, or at the very least, don't let them contradict each other. Otherwise, you will see this mistake repeating again and again and all over again. Oh, and just a quick reminder, don't forget to adjust the model itself. If you need a better reasoning, choose thinking model. If you want speed, choose instant. And if you need a better quality research, go with Pro. This part is pretty intuitive inside the app, yet still it's easy to overlook. Here we go, moving to the second mistake in our top 5. That is, you are talking to ChatGPT like you are talking to a friend instead of a machine. I see this all the time. People write to ChatGPT as if they were texting a colleague, with lots of emotional language and almost no operational instructions. And yeah, it is amazing that tools have evolved so much that we don't need to learn how to code to interact with them, but there is still a big gap between not coding and talking to it like it's your bro. There are a few basic rules you really want to follow. Okay, I'm not going to dive deep into prompt design here, For that, I suggest for you to check out the previous episodes on this channel. But let's recap the most important points to keep in mind when you write a prompt, if you actually want to get a good result. First, set a clear context. Think in simple questions like, where are you? What are you trying to do? For whom? And for what purpose? These questions alone will naturally help you give ChatGPT the context it needs. And we often get frustrated that our friends or relatives cannot read our minds perfectly all the time. So how can we possibly expect ChatGPT to know what's important to us if we don't tell it straight? Unless you explain what you need, ChatGPT doesn't know. Second, give it a role. Who is ChatGPT in this conversation? A consultant, an engineer, a content manager, or maybe a CFO? Think about the task you need to complete and ask yourself, if I had to delegate this to a real person, What profile would I choose? Et voilà, that would be the role you assign to ChatGPT. Third point, define the output format. Here we are talking about how exactly do you want the answer to be delivered. Is it a table, a business framework, a simple bullet list, or a one-page summary? If you don't define the format, ChatGPT will guess. And I'm not sure you will like its guess. Fourth, give constraints. Ask yourself questions like, how much? How long? In what style? Are we speaking about 5 bullets or 15? One paragraph or one page? Professional answer with no filler words or empathetic and warm? And the more clearly you define these boundaries, the closer the output will be to what you had in mind. In addition, I strongly recommend to break the task down into steps and tell ChatGPT to follow them one by one. Think of those steps like a training program. If you just say, get in shape, the person will most likely feel overwhelmed by the task. But if instead you set a clear and realistic order, let's say something like, 
First we warm up, cardio, then strength and stretching. You see, suddenly everything flows. Now you have a sequence, and the beauty of sequence is that it creates clarity. Good news? ChatGPT works the same way. The better the structure, the fewer hallucinations you will get. Perfect! Now let's talk about hallucinations for a moment, because they will happen. Hallucinations are not errors you made. They're just the nature of how these models work. ChatGPT doesn't know things. Instead, it predicts the most likely next piece of text. Think of it like T9 on steroids. And well, sometimes those predictions look confident, but are far from the truth. So, to reduce the number of convincing, but false responses, also known as hallucinations, ask ChatGPT to show its logic, to cite sources, or to support the answer with references. And let me tell you something. Sometimes it's enough to double or triple check with a simple, are you sure? You would be surprised how often ChatGPT will stop, reevaluate, and correct itself the moment you challenge its reasoning. But, of course, first you have to challenge it. And if you thought that's it, mistake number three is coming. Here it is. You do not give ChatGPT concrete examples. This one is tricky because everything else can be perfect. The prompt, the tone, the model, and yet the result still doesn't land. Let's take a look at two scenarios to see why giving examples to ChatGPT is so, so useful. We will use examples to remove ambiguity and better meet our expectations. So, let's say in the first scenario you upload a reference, an example, and you say, ChatGPT, follow this exact style. Same layout, same vibe, but rewrite the content in our brand's colors. Well, you will most probably be satisfied with the results. They will look consistent and clean. Now, imagine another scenario. Let's say we just described the style we would like to get. Something like, ChatGPT, I want a minimalistic, modern, yet professional design in warm colors. And in this case, the result you get is very often nowhere near what you imagine. Why that happens? Well, minimalistic to you is one thing, and to ChatGPT it might be something else. Examples are important because they eliminate free interpretation and they instantly anchor the model. This happens because our brains don't think in pixels, geometry, or hex color codes, whereas machines do. When you describe a face, you might say round eyes, dark hair, soft expression. But the example image contains thousands of details you don't even notice consciously, and that we would never describe. For instance, the exact distance between the eyes, the angle of the jawline, or micro shadows, yada yada yada. ChatGPT, on the other hand, reads these details instantly. Actually, both in artificial intelligence and in business, showing always beats telling. So, the next time your output comes out twisted, inconsistent, or simply not what you imagine, ask yourself, did I give ChatGPT a concrete example to follow? The difference between describing and showing is the difference between mediocre output and consistent, high-quality results. Oh, and by the way, since we have touched on generating images, you can do it straight inside ChatGPT. To do that, just hit the GPT's bottom in the menu, and you will see a whole list of options for image creation and many more. But if you prefer a more realistic effect, personally I would recommend using Gemini. But hey, you do you, that's just my personal favorite. Alright, and if you thought examples would solve everything, unfortunately I'm here to upset you. They won't. So, mistake number four. You try to get ChatGPT to solve too many things at once. You delegate the whole project without breaking it into small, feasible, and achievable tasks. And let me be very honest with you. No prompt, no model, no version of artificial intelligence or any other technology could save you from this. Because this is not a ChatGPT problem. This is a you problem. A prioritization problem. A trying to do everything at the same time problem. Wanting A, everything without putting in the effort, and B, the way too fast. The thing is, if you cannot break the task down for yourself, you will not be able to delegate it not to a team, not to a person, not to ChatGPT. This goes way beyond artificial intelligence. This is literally how we approach everything. You will say, I need to get my life together. And I will say it is too big. You will say, I need to fix my finances. And I will still say it is too big. Even to write a whole report tonight, it's way too big. The problem is that we set goals that are so big and vague that failure is building before we even begin. I don't see ChatGPT as the problem. 
our way of structuring the problem surely is. Good, so the next logical question is, how do we actually do this in practice? Because structure better and prioritize better, it all sounds nice, but it doesn't help if you don't know how. The simplest way is to do this. When you look at a big task, don't start by asking what can I do. Instead, start by asking what has to happen first, otherwise everything else is a waste of time. And here you are, please. That is your non-negotiable step. Once you are clear on that non-negotiable, put it right at the top. And then start looking at what's left, repeating the same logic. To continue building a sequence of further steps, keep on asking yourself, from what is remaining, if I only do one thing next, which one will move the whole project forward the most? This way you will start prioritizing, rather than just going for what is the easiest or what looks most productive from outside. Congratulations! We made it all the way to mistake number five. And truly speaking, for me this is the most important one. The mistake is starting a task with ChatGPT without knowing what result you actually need. In other words, starting without knowing what done even looks like. I know, I know, it sounds confusing now, but give me a second to explain, because once we are on the same page, it will start making complete sense. Let's take something super simple, an email. Anyone can tell ChatGPT, write an email to this person. Sure, you will get an email, a polite one, maybe a nice one, fine. But what will be inevitably lacking? A strategy. A strategy, and I'm not tired of repeating myself a strategy. Although you surely will get a polite email, ChatGPT will not come up on its own, let's say, to propose several time slots to speed up a process of scheduling a meeting. Or ChatGPT will not get on its own that if you only describe the issue, the email will not be nearly as effective as the one where you propose from your side, for example, three feasible options on how to solve the problem numbering them, and all mentioned straight in the first email. You need to understand that whomever you are reaching out is having thousands of their own things going on every day, and I highly doubt your email will magically become their priority. So if you come up with proposing feasible options to solve the problem, the person immediately knows where to start. Whether they agree or not, doesn't even matter, because you already created momentum out of nothing. If you learn how to take responsibility, you stop being just another request and become the person who makes the life of other people easier. And trust me, people love that. And let me tell you something, people tend to help the person who makes their life easier. I don't want to dive too deep right now into the importance of taking responsibility and the importance of always putting other people first to live good and to do good, just because it is a whole era of knowledge deserving its own episode. But what I want to stress here is that Obsessing over optimizing prompts is optimizing the wrong thing. Because whatever model you are using today, tomorrow's model will be way better, faster, and more capable. What you need to optimize is your strategy, your judgment, and your experience. Those are the things no model can take from you. ChatGPT is brilliant as long as you treat it like a tool. The moment you treat it like an all-capable mind or some kind of productivity panacea, nothing works. There is precisely why before starting any task with ChatGPT, you need to know how the final result needs to look like. Otherwise, you're just typing words hoping for magic to happen. But of course, it sounds nice to blame the model. It's easy, and we humans are masters at avoiding responsibility. No wait, it's just evolution wired us to save energy. Back in the day, that is exactly what kept us alive. But to survive today, we need more than that. We also need strategy. So that's it. Five mistakes. Let's wrap them up quickly. First one, your personalization settings are fighting the prompt you are using. Second, you are talking to ChatGPT emotionally, in a way you would talk to a bro, instead of giving instructions a model can decode. Third, you are not giving examples. Describing is just not enough. Fourth, you are not breaking the task into smaller parts. You want everything in one go and fast. That's magic, my friend. And finally, the fifth mistake. You start working without strategy and without a clear idea of what done even look like. Good news is that if you fix these five mistakes, your results with ChatGPT will improve more than with any secret prompt you will ever find online. At the end of the day, the tool is the same for everyone. What makes the true difference is how you think, how you structure, and how you take responsibility for the outcome. If this helped you, pick the mistake you're making the most. 
and fix it in your next prompt. Doing beats any theory. And if you want more episodes like this, I would really appreciate a like and a subscribe. It helps me more than you think. Oh, and a quick reminder, Applied Stuff is also on Spotify. You'll find links to both the English and the Spanish versions right on my profile. Okay, right now that's it for reals. Take care of yourself and have an amazing day. I truly hope you're enjoying this episode. This was Applied Stuff and I'm Lilia. Thank you for listening. See you soon. And until then, think deeper and act smarter. Bye-bye.